Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Matthew's description of the birth of Jesus exposes us to a huge struggle. You and I know about struggle and about how struggle can lead to a positive outcome. It seems in nature that it is mandatory for a butterfly to struggle out of its cocoon. <coughs> the struggle strengthens its wings and allows the wings to be able to hold the butterfly in flight. Without this struggle, and the strengthening of the wings, the butterfly falls to the ground and dies. Another example of a struggle is found in the birth of a baby. A baby who in utero has to struggle down the birth canal for hours. During this process, the lungs are strengthened. If a baby has to be born by cesarean section, for instance, they often need a bit of time in the incubator to ensure that the lungs are strong enough. Joseph and Mary had been promised to each other. A contract or a betrothal had been arranged and a future wedding was in sight. Betrothal meant that Mary was promised to Joseph and that Joseph could call her his wife. But she lived at home with her parents and it was only after the wedding that she would move in and live with Joseph. All of a sudden, Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant. Unbeknownst to Joseph, Mary had consented to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit, which was a new creative act. This made the baby in her womb uniquely related to God. Joseph at this moment had serious doubts about Mary's faithfulness. Adultery in a betrothal was very serious and the consequences of it could lead to death by stoning. Joseph was described as a devout servant of God, very kind and wise. His reaction to Mary's condition was that he would divorce her quietly. To end a betrothal, divorce was necessary, since betrothal was recognized as a legal commitment. Next in this story comes the great reversal. Thanks be to God, an angel was sent in a dream to Joseph. Here was a wonderful example of God's working in us and giving us the desires which would ultimately lead to God's good purpose. The angel told Mary that Mary was innocent and that she was to be the mother of the Savior of Israel through the Holy Spirit, and that he shouldn't fear in proceeding with his plans to marry her. Here the Holy Spirit was understood to be a manifestation of God's work in creation. In the ancient world, it was believed that dreams provided guidance for the future. Matthew described Joseph as frequently receiving the guidance of angels in his dreams. First, we are aware that Joseph lost his fear and doubt about Mary when the angel explained to him what God's purpose was in Mary's pregnancy. Then after Jesus' death birth, the angel told Joseph in a dream to take Mary and the baby Jesus and to flee to Egypt because Herod had threatened to kill all male Jewish babies. The angel told Mary and Joseph when to return from Egypt after Herod's death. And finally, the angel told Joseph to settle his family in Galilee rather than in Judea. In all these cases, God was working in Joseph, his desire for his good purpose. But at the same time, God
God always provided Joseph with a choice of whether to follow his guidance or not. From these examples, it is evident that Joseph was open to God working in him and to changing his desires to the desires of God. As Joseph awoke from sleep, he was aware of a promise from God that his son Jesus would save people from their sins. At this moment, Joseph must have felt overwhelmed with joy and love for God, and by the fact that he was involved in such an event. Joseph married Mary and loved both Mary and Jesus. He protected them, looked after them, and provided a home for them. Joseph obeyed God's command and named Jesus. He was indeed Jesus' earthly father. Because of Joseph's faithfulness and commitment to God, God's saving work began. Today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we look to Joseph. Joseph is referred to as the husband of the mother of Jesus. Joseph is mentioned only a few times in the New Testament. He is connected to the birth and the childhood stories of Jesus, which are found in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Joseph, as described in his genealogy in Matthew, was descended from the royal line of David. It was through Joseph that Jesus came to be included in David's line. Many churches, monasteries, and other institutions have been named after Joseph. St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal is the largest church in Canada, with the largest dome of its kind in the world, second only to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The Eastern Orthodox Church, at the celebration of the Feast of St. Joseph, which is in March, chant the following hymn. Joseph, the betrothed, saw clearly in his old age that the sayings of the prophets had been fulfilled openly. He received inspiration from the angels who cried, Glory to God, for he has brought peace on earth. At home this week, when you have a quiet time, I would ask you to be aware if there is any aspect of your life in which God is working in you to give you the desire to work His good purpose. I would like to end with a long quote from H.K. Omega. Joseph is the earthly hero of today's lesson. He saw the miracle of God's plan unfolding, and he offered himself to be a key player in the eternal plan. That surrender, that willingness in the action, that leads us to true love. Joseph was a blesser. He made this moment in history blessed by his presence. He blessed by being able to see and understand what existed beneath the surface of the situation, which caused him to handle the situation with wonder and delight. This out of the ordinary behavior awakened others to the magnificent, the mystical, and the ever-present reality of the sacred. Joseph had found the reign of God. Joseph's yes to the human birth of Jesus his blessing and his protection through threat and terror and his faithfulness as a man of God help usher in the kingdom of God. If Jesus had not been born, we wouldn't be here today. Thanks be to God. Amen.